highest ranked teams in open division. Just uh, saying something, we got, I told you earlier today, seven out of the top 25 teams in the nation are competing in today's contest. So it's no exaggeration. But on this deck, you're seeing two of the finest parliamentary debate teams in the entire country. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you your finalists, the team of Aaliyah Williams and Luke Lindenbush from Annalee High School. from Winter High School. <laughs> All right, now I hope that you're here to carefully listen to today's uh, debate. And since these people have worked so hard to get up on this stage and deserve our respect, I want you to take a moment right now to make sure that you've turned off any of those devices that are going to be making noise, ringing, or, doing, or, or otherwise, um, taking your attention away. If you feel the need to text or, or, or you know, uh, message somehow, well, you wouldn't want your judge doing that in the middle of your round, so you can step outside and do that. Let's give these debaters our attention. So, everybody got that? All right. Debaters, are you ready? Now, um, you want to see your, do you want to know where your judges are? Judges, raise your hands again. All right, we've got three judges in the, in the field. Judges, are you ready? Let's begin the final round. Everyone ready? Yeah. All right, so before I begin my time today, I'd like to thank you all for being here and making this possible. This has been a dream since, uh, since freshman year. So. That being said, starting time, my name is Aaliyah Williams. I'll be the first speaker of the affirmation of today's resolution. The United States incarcerates too many of its citizens. As is the affirmation's pleasure and burden, we're going to start off by defining some of the uh, words of today's round so we can have a nice educational debate, and then moving on into our three contentions for you today. So first off, we're going to define the United States and its citizens, both as pretty self-explanatory, that would include this nation and all of us, as well as everyone else, Incarcerates as imprisons and too many as more than is beneficial to society. Speaking of which, we'll be weighing this round on that of net benefits. That's whoever does the most amount of good for the most amount of people. So if the affirmation can prove that we do indeed incarcerate more than is beneficial for society, we would urge an affirmative ballot and vice versa for the negative. So that being said, I'm going to move on into my contention today. My first contention is that of disproportionality. So if we look to our society today, or, or rather to the global society, we can see that the United States has less than 5% of the world's population. And yet, if we look to our prison statistics, we have more than 25% of the world's prisoners. This isn't good for our society, this isn't good for our world, and this isn't helping us out. We can see that many of the people that are incarcerated, and again, many of the people that are a part of that 25%, are incarcerated for nonviolent crimes. In fact, 60% of the people that are in prison right now are incarcerated for nonviolent crimes. They are not the rapists and murderers that we think of. They are simple people who have done something wrong and are now in prison. This is too many and this is too high for our society, as I'll show you throughout the rest of my case. Not only that, but according to the United States Bureau of Justice Statistics, there are currently 2,266,800 adults in prison. This is far too many for society and this is far too many to be beneficial. When we have such a large number of our population in society, especially when 60% of them are there for nonviolent crimes, they are not able to contribute to society. They are not able to allow our economy to prosper. They are not allowed to innovate or even to lead their own lives in the freedom that we take for granted. These people are not helping society, and their imprisonment is not helping society either. Not only that, but we have a severe disproportionality when it comes to the race of prisoners. According to the Sentencing Project, there are currently 50% of inmates in the United States are African American, whereas we see only 12% of our population are. So when we can have a, a disproportional amount of not only people in prison, people that aren't helping out our society, but people that are being discriminated against potentially because of their race, we have a serious problem. Moving on into my second contention today, that of cost. The, this cost the United States, the average, um, the amount that we are spending on incarcerating our, our civilians is Six, uh, $63.4 billion annually, according to a recent study by CBS. We can see that when we are spending so much money on incarcerating people, 60% of whom aren't even there for violent crimes, we have a problem. This money 
causes a severe opportunity cost for the rest of our nation. We could be spending this money on education, or on health care reform, or on anything else that affects our lives, as opposed to keeping these people who aren't even violent people off of the streets. This is too high, and it is not benefiting our society. And that's just for the United States as a whole. It costs states an average of $45,000 per prisoner that they have incarcerated. This is comparable to all of the money that we spend on police and fire and other public services. So think about if we could double the amounts that we spend. Think about that much money going into our schools. Think about all of the other things that that money could be doing and all of those things that are lost because we have these people in prison. Not only that, but we are housing approximately 500,000 people who simply can't afford to pay bail. They aren't even in prison. They are simply sitting in jails waiting for their trials. They haven't been convicted. We don't even know if they are actually guilty. And because they can't pay bail, we are spending approximately $9 billion annually on housing them and providing them food, whereas if we were to simply let them back out and maybe put them on you know, some sort of house arrest or anything other than the system that we have now, we could be greatly benefiting our society. And looking to my third contention today, that of recidivism and rehabilitation. Recidivism is simply when someone is a repeat offender, uh, generally for the same crime, although not necessarily, when we can see that this is a significantly high proportion of the people that are in prison and how we're not helping them. So currently, recidivism is at a 60% rate overall and a 95% rate for juveniles. We're simply not trying hard enough. Too many of our people are in prison because we're not doing anything or we're not doing enough to rehabilitate them. All of these people will go back, will repeat, will cause more of a problem for our society, and this, this isn't good. In fact, this causes a significant harm. So moving on to, to our second subpoint under this is that rehabilitation is absolutely superior. We can see, according to D.A. Andrews, a PhD who, who conducted a study and rather skimmed information from about 500 studies and found the average that it, rehabilitation works 35% better than simple incarceration. So if we were to, were to have a program where we could take the people that we would otherwise be putting into jail and allow them to rehabilitate, allow them to you know, uh, go back and, and produce for our society and help us out again, which have a 35% decrease in the number of repeat offenders, which costs our society money, which costs our society protective, productive bodies, which costs our society so many of these net detriments that we are absolutely incarcerating too many people. And finally, we can look to the case of education. Prevention is the best method, you know, an, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and the only thing that America is focusing on is curing our epidemic. We have simply become addicted to incarcerating people, whereas if we were to prevent it instead, to give them education so that they weren't forced into drug dealing or lives on the streets, if we were allowing the education, we could seriously stop this problem. However, over the last two decades, spending on prisons has increased six times more than our educational spending. This New York Times study is scary at best, and severely detrimental to society at worst. And sadly, it is both of these, because we are not working on preventing this. We are not working on rehabilitating these people. In fact, all that we have are these people that are repeat offenders. We are not working on the costs and the detriments that that is providing to society. We are not working on the disproportionate number of people that we put into our prisons. This provides great harm for our the United States, and because of this, the United States absolutely does incarcerate too many of its citizens. Thank you. As first agency speaker, I'd just like to extend a blanket of thanks to literally everybody in this room. This is the biggest audience I'm sure they've ever had or we've ever had. It's pretty intimidating. So, briefly going over a very quick roadmap, we're going to be going over some topic based issues, going over the motion, the interpretation, which we, on the most part, agree. And then I'm going to go into the advocacy and where the major flaw into basically is on the affirmation side. Then we're going to be going straight down the flow, first bringing up our three arguments and then using those arguments to cross examine their arguments as well as refute. So, going over the motion, we agree about all the contextual definitions, as well as too many, but a little observation I'd like to bring up is that the number one benefit to our society is upholding the social contract. The give and take of services and the repercussion of giving up rights to get back order and safety and giving up um, our property, our money, and our taxes to get back services. This is the number one benefit to society because this is the greatest benefit to society and this is the number one thing our government was founded on. 
That being said, I'd like to hop right into the major advocacies of affirmative and of the, the, negative, uh, the negation. So, the advocacy of the negation is the whole idea that the affirmation has a false link. They, they don't actually have something that is linked to the motion. We're talking about too many. Quantity. Many doesn't mean too long. Many doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means it's too many. That's as simple as it was, and by them defining that contextually, all we're talking about is amount here in today's debate. So the advocacy of the affirmation is supposed to be the amount of prisoners that are being incarcerated by the U.S. is detrimental to society. Not everything that they brought up about how we're being racist in our system of government, that, that it's going to cost way too much, that it's not rehabilitation. Those are really good and just arguments, and we'd love to debate them, but that's not what we're debating in today's debate. We're talking about amount. So, going into the advocacy of litigation, that's exactly what we're doing. We're talking about the map of people. So, going into that observation of the false link, I'd like to go straight down our side of the flow. So, basically, as a brief refutation of why we're not actually talking about all their arguments and we're talking about what we're debating here, the amount, the only logical response to crime is one that responds justly and deters more crime. Incarceration does just that. That's what incarceration is. Our response of, our response of incarceration is determined by the laws that we pass. So what this means is that the amount of people imprisoned, the, the whole ideal that, they, that, the affirm, uh, that that affirmation has to defend is that they need to state that because we're doing this, because we're incarcerating all these people, benefits are hindered and harms are, in, uh, are increased. But that's not what they're actually arguing. They're arguing against the legal system and the system of our government and our entire idea of justice. So going into this, our first contention is all about how long it is for these people to be in prison. The majority of their uh, case on costs and all that revolves around not the fact that so many people are incarcerated, but how long these people are being incarcerated. It costs a lot of money for one person to be in prison for 10, 20 years. It doesn't cost that much for them to be in a month. So we're not actually talking about the amount. They're talking about how long it is. All this cost stems from the, the prison system is unnecessary because it's a result of too many people being incarcerated. We're not talking about that. We're talking about how long they're being incarcerated, and that's the whole idea of their second contention. So, going into our second argument and the refutation of their first and third, we're talking about as long as these people are being incarcerated justly, it's not too many. That's the whole idea of justice. If we're upholding our system of justice, it can never be too many. What this means is that upholding our social contract as a nation, which is a careful blend of our values, our social contract in the Constitution, and our legal system most importantly, the only way to incarcerate fewer people in a just society as we are is basically by not upholding our legal system, and that's the whole entire advocacy of the affirmation. Now going into our third and final point is the flaw is not the process of the incarceration, but the legal code that requires us to do so. We're not upholding the legal code here. We're upholding that the amount of people incarcerated is a product of the legal code, which is to say that incarceration doesn't violate our social contract. Rather, our social contract as a whole is flawed. The, asset, the affirmative side of this motion only stands in a world with an entirely different social contract, where a social contract doesn't allow for all these bad things to happen. That just the amount of people in prison is the result of it, is the effect, is the implementation of all these bad things. What this means is that we have to debate this motion in the status quo, which means that any flaws of the status quo are a result of an immoral legal thing. Anytime the cost is too high, we're not rehabilitating prisoners, or it's disproportional to the world's, in world's imprisonment, that's not because we imprison too many, that's because our legal system allows for us to imprison that many. So quickly re-refuting all these contentions as it brought up, the, the affirmation's first argument is about disproportionality. If we have 5% of the world's population, and if we have 25% of the world's prison population, and 16% are known by the crimes. We agree, this is atrocious, this is horrible, and we would like to see this completely fixed. But that's not the effect of too many prisoners. That's the effect of the legal code, and that's what we're debating. And that's not what we're debating in today's debate. 25% compared to 5%, that's all because our legal system has atrocious laws that allow people to be arrested for things like marijuana and 16% like nonviolent crimes. That's not because it's too many, that's just an effect of a, a, a biased and unfair legal code. But again, that's not what we're debating. So the impact of this about the race of prisoners, 50% are African Americans, are you, the affirmative is basically saying that too many, too many African Americans are being imprisoned. That's because our legal system and our legal code is inherently racist through our nation's history, as well as our, our legal system and our judges and things like that. So basically, having a disproportionality to the world and a racist system of government in which too many African Americans, too many minorities are being imprisoned, 
That's not because it's too many are incarcerated. It's because the US system of legality and the US system of justice allows for these things to happen. Reapplying this to their second contention about cost is that it costs lots of money. We could spend this on healthcare, we can spend this on all these different things. Most prisoners can't pay bail. Judge, again, judges, again, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about whether or not this is applicable, whether or not our prison system is pragmatic. We're talking about is it too many? So what's at, what the affirmative advocacy really should be is whether or not our system of justice doesn't uphold how many prisoners we're going with. But because every single one of their contention applies to our current system of legality and they pretty much inherently agree that all of our prisoners are being justly, uh, justly incarcerated and have nothing to do with innocence versus guilty, their contentions do not stand in today's debate. Finally, their entire contention about recidivism and rehabilitation, again, that's the effect of our prison system. Our prison system is not actually applied to being a rehabilitation system like places like Britain or France. It's not like that. That's not our prison system, and we agree. That's a bad thing. But again, that's not what we're debating, and that's why you vote strongly in the communication. Or does it cost too much because our legal system allows it to cost 
It costs us much because we have to abide by the rules of our Constitution. We have to make sure that our prisoners have fair quarters, that they're not being abused, and that they don't have uh, that they that they have the same rights as other citizens. Do. Because if we're incarcerating them and if we're actually abiding by the social contract, then we are giving them life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness within the confines of the prison cell. So we're giving them proper access to food. We're giving them any, all of their basic needs, and we can't simply forego this. Um, but what we can forego are the amount of prisoners that we have. And I'm looking at the idea of the United States incarcerates too many of its citizens because this cost is relatively fixed. It's something that we're not going to bring down tremendously. And as such, the one thing that we can bring down tremendously, and the one thing that we can garner from the opportunity cost that we're losing in the status quo, is the amount of people that we're losing. So yes, our case is largely based off of numbers, but these statistics actually apply to the case at hand. Um, first off, in their response um, about, uh, about our first contention, uh, they, they said that mostly what we're talking about is the effect, and, uh, and that um, really what we're talking, what, 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 we should, what we should be talking about are the causes. And really what we have to ask uh, with this is, as an audience and as a debate team, is with this question, is it talking about an effect of a cause merely discussing an impact of a harm? Um, so really what we have to look at here is that we're discussing the impacts that are actually here. We're discussing the world. We're not discussing simply the causes, simply the legal code. We're actually talking about the impacts that this has on the world as a whole and the net detriments that it's providing for the United States. So since they, since they didn't actually respond to any other points in terms of disproportionality, and all the reasons why having 25% of the world's prisoners with 5% of the world population is wrong, this point extends across the flow in favor of the affirmation. They didn't talk about the fact that 60% of nonviolent of, of um, you know, those incarcerated are in their for nonviolent crimes, and this is another point that extends across the globe for the affirmation, because they simply said that we were talking too much about numbers, they didn't actually refute it. In addition, they, they didn't talk about the potential racial profiling that exists within incarcerations, and the fact that 50% of the inmates are African Americans when only 12% of the population is. So once again, this point also extends across in favor of the affirmation, because we've shown very clear benefits um, toward our side in showing why the United States incarcerates too many of its citizens, and largely for the wrong reasons. Um, next, we can look at um, the cost, and once again, they, they said that we were talking about, um, you know, just the length of things um, and how long people are being incarcerated for. And as I talked about, with the fixed rate of incarceration and how this is something that we can't really change, we have to ask the question here, doesn't being incarcerated longer cost more? Doesn't it provide more of an opportunity cost for the American government? Doesn't it cause the government to spend more money that they could be spending in ways that are far more beneficial? And the answer is absolutely yes. The government can and should be spending money in ways that are more beneficial than this because the United States incarcerates too many of its citizens. Now, one of the opportunity costs we're losing by incarcerating all these people leads into our third contention, which largely um, went unaddressed. Again, they said it was simply an effect, but really what we're just looking at here are the effects, the impacts, what we can actually debate on. Um, and they didn't look at the fact that the recidivism rates are extremely high. If we're going to try to actually cause a net benefit for American citizens, we're going to make sure that those that were incarcerated are actually not going to repeat what they're doing, so they can just go back into prison after they've been let out, so we can spend more money on providing basic needs for them. Um, and at this point, um, the alarmingly high figure that 95% of convicted ju juveniles recidivate, that they go back and commit a, the same or similar crime and end up in jail again. This is something that we should not be looking at, especially when we're looking at the statistics that were referenced in our second subpoint, which is that rehabilitation is better and that it's 35% better than incarceration. It's something that provides more of a net benefit for the United States. We're not just talking about the effects here when we should be talking about the causes. We're talking about the clear opportunity cost, a clear opportunity that the United States government should be going for, one that would actually provide more net benefits to the American people, and one that really extends across the flow in favor of the affirmation. And lastly, looking at the idea that education is preventive, once again, was not referenced at all by the negative team. So all of our points within our third contention of recidivism and rehabilitation extend across the flow, because really what we're not looking at here are just the effects of just the causes. We're looking at the real world. We're looking at the United States. We're looking at the net benefits and the net detriments. And I think for all of these reasons, they are just strong about the affirmation that the United States indeed does incarcerate far too many of its citizens. First of all, I'd like to do my first speech is pretty much take a step back to today's debate. 
Both teams have done a great job defending their position on the motion set forth. But what I really want to do in today's debate is really make the distinction between both sides and what we're actually advocating for in today's debate. The affirmation today is advocating that the U.S. incarcerates too many of its citizens. And by actually advocating for that, they're actually arguing against the legal system. Therefore, the affirmation and the argument against the legal system, while the negation, on the other hand, are claiming that you can never... Um, so you can never incarcerate too many citizens when they're going against the law. If anything, you're upholding justice. No matter how many people are violating the law, you're always upholding justice. So they may be claiming that the legal system is wrong, but we're claiming that it's not that, um, excuse me, that you can never incarcerate too many people because it's the law. And with that, what I'd really like to do now is just give a brief roadmap of what I'm going to do in today's debate. Our first is going to be going over the case of the affirmation, show it really doesn't stand, and show how the case of negation actually does and should win today's debate. With that, let's just jump right in. Before I begin repeating their whole, all their contentions, once more, I'd really like to point out today's debate, but their, their whole contentions, very loudly spoken, but their whole contentions revolve around education, their statistics, everything revolves around the idea that they all apply to the legal system. Once more, it does not, um, not too many people are being incarcerated. Saying that too many people are being incarcerated, saying that there's something wrong with the law, that the laws that we have in place right now are completely flawed because if there's too many people incarcerated, then they definitely should not be there. And that's what the, the uh, excuse me, the affirmation is arguing. And the first contention about disproportionality, we'd like to point out that the negative effects that they brought about are not because of the too many of the citizens being sent to jail, it's because of the legal system. They, their reputation to our reputation was that about impacts and how important impacts are, but it's not because of the fact that they went against the law, it's because the law maybe is not interpreted, um, maybe the law isn't in accordance with the affirmation. But the law is set, so if you go against the law, you're going against the social contract. And the job of the American federal, the United States federal government is to pull the social contract and provide safety for all Americans. And by ultimately saying by, um, excuse me, so therefore, they all stem from the legal code. So their whole entire first contention, as well as their second and third, revolve around these ideas that the legal code is really corrupt, but that's not what we're debating today, and that's what I really need to get across to you. Their second contention was that about cost and how spending is very horrendous. We can be putting this money in great things, as we agree, education, healthcare, all these very important issues, but once more, this isn't the result of too many go no, too many um, incarcerated, too many people being incarcerated in the flawed in the legal system. It's because it's due to the, the length of the people there. It's not because they broke the law, it's due to the length of the terms they're serving. The fact that they have to stay there two years, four years, five years, that's the reason why these prices are so skyrocketed. It's a flaw in the legal system, not the fact that these people are going against the social contract. Their next and final contention about recidivism and rehabilitation. They made reputation was by my my partner when they asked me why was that it costs too much because we're going with the Constitution. Therefore, they're actually kind of advocating for what we're advocating for. If you're going with the Constitution, you're therefore agreeing that um, that they're going against legal laws. Therefore, the third contention really doesn't stand as it just they're arguing for the wrong, and that's what we're really needing to get across to you today. They're arguing that the legal system is wrong, and as a result, we're seeing a horrendous result of Latinos, Hispanics all in jail. We're seeing a horrendous result of money being spent in ways that we can be spending it in other ways, and also rehabilitation in the fact that there's so many people in jail. It's the United States is not upholding their laws and the social contract. It's because of many other issues, such as being a flaw in the legal code or the fact that the terms that they're serving are very long. So therefore, their whole case really doesn't stand as it really doesn't actually embrace the motion. Arguing, you don't, um, upholding that justice can never be too many. They're advocating that too many people are being sent to jail for the wrong reasons when the law is set in stone. If you commit a crime, if you kill someone, if you smoke marijuana in some states, you're gonna go to jail. There's a flaw in the legal system. That's what they're advocating for all. Um, that's what they're claiming on their whole entire case. Therefore, it doesn't stand. Our next contention was about, was about pretty much that it's not too many. It's never too many people to go against a social contract. If all of us were to commit a crime, it would be just as good for all of us to go to jail because that's the problem of the social contract. You give stuff to um, the United States federal government in return for protection. And that, the protection is laws. And if you violate a law, you need to be reprimanded. Uh, not only to, um, for moral education, but also for setting an example for other people. And our final contention, which pretty much revolved around the idea that there's a flaw in the legal code, which they pretty much advocate the whole entire case. The result of the flaw in the legal code is a disproportionate amount of Latinos and Hispanics in jail. The fact that we're spending too much 
um, which is a result of length, and the fact that um, recidivism and rehabilitation aren't working. And with that, I just wish a strong vote for the negation as we're actually debating today's motion. We're debating whether the United States incarcerates too many of its citizens, as opposed to whether or not there's a flaw in the legal system, or whether or not the effects of the long terms are hard enough, which we agree is a very big issue, but that's not what we're debating today. And with that, there's a strong vote for the negation. Thank you. Not because 
as you guys are remembering, you feel that there's too many. We can't rehabilitate this many people. No, when we have less people in prisons, we still weren't rehabilitating them. That's because of our prison system. It's not because there's too many. And there's no evidence that has brought up that states that because we have too many, it costs too much. Because we have too many, we can't rehabilitate them. And because we have too many, it's disproportionate. All those things lead back to the single advocacy of the nation, which is, it's the legal code. It's not how many. So keep that in mind as we go over to the side of the name. This is a very quick side because it's no. We're not incarcerating too many. And this goes back to our entire advocacy. We're not going to bring up the, our, all our arguments out too long and all our arguments about the logical response and things like that, which they did significantly refute. We're talking about the dropped argument that, that, they, got, that they dropped. If they're being incarcerated justly, then it's never too many. Because that point was unrefuted, negation wins in today's day. Thank you. That's the negative world, and that's not good for society. Looking to the 
transformative world, we consider what is important for society. We consider the number of people in prison. We consider how it affects our economy. We consider how it affects our educational system. We consider the number of people that repeat offend and the number of people that are being rehabilitated. We consider how much good these people are providing for our society and we consider whether or not it is disproportional, the number of people that we have in jail compared to our percentage of the population. These are the things that are important. These are the things that we have to look at when we look at what's best for society. And these are the things that our debate is based upon. So going back to the beginning of our debate, to the beginning of my speech, thank you all, this has been a dream. But more importantly, the next thing I said was the definitions and then my case, and their only refutation was that's not what we should be talking about. And I've shown you time and time again how we must look at the effects. We must look at the effects on our society because that is what we care about in our world and that is what we care about under the standard of net benefits that was set forward. So while it's a brilliant idea to take care of the social contract, the affirmative provides substantially more net benefits for society and has shown you how the United States absolutely does incarcerate too many of its citizens. Thank you. High five. <laughs> wow. I don't care what she's talking about. It works. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, uh uh and uh uh. <laughs> Every day with her. Yeah.